What's up y'all? Welcome back in the shop. Today I have this 12 volt hydraulic pump and this is the style pump that you'd use on like a dump trailer or uh, possibly a homemade snow plow, anything hydraulic like that. A lot of dump trucks use this style and uh, we're gonna set the hydraulic pressure on it and uh, all of them have, as far as I know, an adjustment on the pressure relief valve. That way you can set your uh, very peak BSI pressure on them. And uh, we're just kind of going to go through and I'm going to show you how to do this on this particular pump and I give you some ideas on what it'll look like on other control units and uh, manifolds and two-way controls and all that. So let's get into it here. So I have this hydraulic pump here. It's 12 volt. Uh, I believe it's two horsepower. And I just picked up two of these. I got them off the used market. And uh, this one was supposed to be non-working. Both of them were supposed to be brand new. The guy that sold them to me uh, had told me that someone else had purchased this one and uh, had brought it back and said it was no good. Well, when I got to looking at it, it looked to me like it had never even had any oil put in it. So I went ahead and bought it. He sold it to me for next to nothing because of the situation with it. So when I got it here, I uh, wanted to check and see, make sure, which is the only really good way to check, is to put a pressure gauge on it. And that's what I've done here. And I'm gonna show y'all how to hook it up and uh, check the pressure on a hydraulic system and uh, a general overall rule of thumb and how to adjust different pressures on different types of systems. So this particular pump uses ATF, uh, Dexron 3 Mercon, or Dexmerc as a lot of people call it. It's just your standard automatic transmission fluid. And that's really common for almost all 12 volt pumps. I don't know why they don't use regular hydraulic oil. Maybe this is just a little bit cleaner and preserves the pump a little better. But uh, most all of them, like your campers, uh, for your uh, hydraulic jacks, uh, dump trailers. Uh, even a lot of dump trucks have a 12 volt pump set up on them and they all take transmission fluid as far as I know. So this has two ports. They consider this a single action pump, which is just pressure out. And then when you push the down button on it, it relieves the pressure via this solenoid here but no hydraulic pump is truly a single action because all of them have an input and an output and this one is just capped off and that's the way it's sold if you can see it says p for pressure t for tank so that tank would be your return line if you're running to like a hydraulic manifold you'd have the pressure in and then the return line would just you'd take out this plug and just remove it and put a fitting in it to hook a hose to it. And that's the way most of these pumps are set up. I've never seen one that didn't have two ports, even though they consider it a single action. So just some information to put in the back of your head if you're out there looking for a pump and you need a double action, which most systems you do, unless it's maybe a dump trailer where you're only running a single action cylinder. So uh, most of them are set up that way. Just kind of keep that in mind. Even if it is considered to be a single action, you can hook it up for double action. You just have to re uh, set up the fittings a little different. So I'm gonna show you how to set the pressure on these. This right here is a cap that covers the adjustment for the pressure uh, relief valve. And it's basically just a really tight spring with a ball bearing on the end and a little screw to adjust the tension on the spring. Most hydraulic systems, actually all hydraulic systems should have a setup like that. Some log splitters don't, uh, but most of them have it set up in the actual controller. Uh, so it would be in the manifold or in the controller, double action controller that the the handle is on, it'd have a little port on the side with the adjustment to set the pressure. And the uh, same type of setup, ball brewing a spring and a screw to adjust it. 
So this cap, you just remove that and adjust it and then run it and see what the pressure is. I have a gauge on here, which is actually an oxygen gauge, but it goes up to about 4,500 PSI, which most hydraulic systems are between three and 35. So this will work out well. The gauge works perfectly fine, but you're definitely gonna need a gauge that goes up that high to be able to set it and watch and see where you're at. Otherwise, you're gonna be kind of shooting in the dark as far as what your pressure is. This is a pretty simple. Positive goes on the primary side of the solenoid. Ground is supposed to go on this one. There's a little bolt down here that's supposed to be for your ground outlet. I'm just gonna take this jump box here and clip it right on the body of it. But uh, I'm gonna set this up on a tripod so I can kind of do this with both hands and you can kind of see how it all works here. Got our cables hooked up there. Just power on from this jump box. And if you can see the gauge, max is out at 45. We're shooting for on this pump, specs are 2,900. So we're gonna set it right around 3,000. Now a note to take into consideration. It'll probably work and the pressure will probably be accurate, but I like to put a fitting in here and just run some fluid through it especially on a brand new pump to make sure everything is lubricated and there's no air in the actual pump. And uh, I've already done that, but you would just thread that in there, put this hose back into the tank fill hole and uh, just run the pump a little bit, let it pump some fluid through. And that way everything is lubricated, there's no air or anything, then you can remove this and put your gauge in there. So if you could watch your gauge there. And you can see it's right at 3,000, right 3, just maybe a hair under. And uh, Apparently it doesn't hold pressure 100%, but a, uh, a pump with this style solenoid and that has pressure uh, pump and then the solenoid lets it down, it should pump up and pretty much hold pressure for a good amount of time. If it doesn't hold pressure for a good amount of time, uh, there's an issue with the solenoid valve and or the pressure relief valve could be dirty or something of that nature but uh, these pumps are supposed to hold pressure and that tells you that the actual check valves and everything in the actual block here is working properly. And if you push this, pressure, hit that and it lets it down. So that's set up for like a one-way cylinder. Uh, I'm gonna be using it for a tow setup I'm building. I'm building a wheel lift to go under the back of my GMC and uh, I'm gonna be setting it up for a two-way cylinder so I'm gonna remove this port and run it to a uh, three spool block that'll control my three different hydraulic sources. That's the way I'm gonna have it set up. And uh, when I do all that, I'm gonna record and show all that to y'all. But uh, that's gonna be a little while yet. I'm still collecting all my different parts I need, so. All right, let's get into actually adjusting this. Now I have already met with the adjustment on this sun, that's why it's set right to the 3000. It was quite a bit higher. I'm just gonna turn this up a quarter turn. <coughs> you need to have this cap screwed back on because it will leak fluid through the threads of the adjustment screw. Just stand that back up.
and you can see it's about 500 psi higher retract pressure about 3500 right there and this particular pump is supposed to be set at 29 I looked up specs online on it Clockwise just tightens the spring, counterclockwise loosens the spring. You can kind of understand how that works. Let's loosen it a little bit and see where it, what the pressure is on that. You, you just got to play with it a little bit and keep trying it until you find the right pressure. There's not a lot, a lot to it. it. Just takes a couple tries. We're gonna hit this again. And there we're at about 25 so we're too low now apparently this wire it doesn't have very good connection remote is magnetic too. A lot of them are. We're going to get this back up to where I originally had it set at. It's about right there. right at about 3,000, which is perfect for this particular pump. So this is the gauge up close, you can see. And uh, 3,000 right there is right where we're heading for. We had it all the way up to about 35, and we hit it down to about 25, and now we're just right at that 3,000, which is perfect for this particular pump. And uh, this, I mean, it's full fluid, red transmission fluid. Uh, I don't have any other uh, control valves to show you at the moment, but they would have a similar type uh, adjustment on them. It'd be pretty noticeable. And uh, if you didn't know, you could always have the hydraulic system off and uh, remove that screw or whatever it looks like or cap on that particular control unit and uh, just see if that's got that spring in there and that ball bearing, just kind of look at how it's set up. Most of them are pretty easy to tell the adjustment location on them, but it's, there'll be the same type of thing. There's normally a lock nut or, of some type and then an adjustment screw. And uh, you just put your pressure gauge on there and uh, turn on the pump and just see where it goes to and it just adjust it from there kind of a little trial and error to get it at the right spot but but uh, that's really all there is to it and like i said all systems should have a pressure relief valve on them it just depends on who built them and how they set them up but uh generally all control valves have some type of pressure relief set up and uh these style pumps do as well because they're not made to have an actual control valve it's all controlled by the solenoid on this unit so all right thanks for watching if you enjoy my content be sure to like and subscribe and uh follow me on facebook as well uh, i'm on facebook and youtube at uh, back in the shop and uh if you have any questions hit me up in the comments I love the interaction. Stay tuned, we'll have more videos coming of all different shop type circumstances and uh, repair videos and tool reviews and all that good stuff. So we'll see you next time.